Hello, hi, and welcome to today's video in which we are going to look at uh, basic troubleshooting with one of the most important tools in TIA Portal and also Semantic Manager. It has this tool as well. Probably most other PLC programs and most other programs have it. Um, it is called cross-referencing. We can see and look where a variable is being used in case it might be overwritten or in case, hey, this is not the right value. Where does the value actually come from? So therefore, I've got a very simple example here. Um, let's look at it. Um, boop. I am using my nice little tool for it. You can see the conveyor belt on the bottom there um, and the TR program on the left side. So the TR program is right now very simple. I've got a belt push button one, the motor goes in reverse. If I press the belt push button two, which is normally closed, the belt goes forward. Um, to visualize that, I have a boxes. So let's grab a box here. Let's put that box on, on the conveyor here. <coughs> And I, those are those two push, button, push buttons. So if I press the first push button, you can see, don't look at the, bo the box shouldn't flip. That's just in my software. If I press the push button, belt goes forward, perfectly fine. If I press this push button, belt goes reverse, perfectly fine. That's exactly what the, except that roll. I don't know why the box rolls. Um, except for the roll, that's exactly what the program uh, does, right? That's exactly what the belt should do. Forward, reverse. That's what we, <laughs> this is just funny, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Perfect. The second thing we have is a program here. I have an automatic mode, right? You see my little automatic mode there on the left side. Um, if a push button, that push button is called cylinder push button one, whatever that is, if a push button is pressed and there is a part at the beginning, we are setting the motor and forward. We are Resetting the motor and forward if there is something at the belt sensor end. So let's see if I now grab my little box here. If I grab the little box and put it somewhere else, you see the start position sensor is not active anymore. Just if I put something in there and we only reset here in the end, you see this is the reset statement. So let's see if I put something here in the beginning and press this push button. This is the cylinder one push button. What should happen? Of course, the box should um, start traveling. Right, the box should start traveling. <clears throat> and we see the box actually does start traveling, but it stops. You see it stops. That's not what it should do. Maybe this box is just broken. Let's take another one. Let's grab this box. <clears throat> let's put it here. Great. And let's try it again. Hmm doesn't work at all, right? Really strange. So this is really strange. Um, now, the box only travels a little bit. It should only reset here in the end, right? This is where the reset is. So it should only reset here. Why does it still reset in the beginning? This is really strange. Like this, this is not how it's supposed to be. Let's see that a last time. So the box is there. I press the button. Box should travel. Box travels, but only for a little bit. And now it is somehow even broken. So why does it still travel any further? Right? Now it doesn't reset at all. That's strange. So some strange things are going on. Does my, my push button still works? <laughs> I love that the boxes. Why is that stupid box rolling? <laughs> Sorry, my bad. I haven't tested that. The box doesn't roll. <clears throat> Manual mode po works perfectly fine. Uh, automatic mode does not work. This is strange. It has to do with something called a multiple assignment. We are actually overwriting that belt motor forward. We are overwriting it. We are using the same variable in manual and in automatic mode. So let's see what happens if I press this button here forward. You see it actually my automatic mode, it turns green. Why does that turn green? This is strange. It should only turn green when I press this button and there is something in the beginning it still turns green because the variable that we have, the variable that we have here on top, this one, right? This one is also used in our manual mode, belt motor forward, this one. We don't care about the reverse, it's just used once. The belt motor forward, this one here is used twice, meaning it can be overwritten somewhere. They're, they're basically counteracting. Both of them 
are used in the same program, meaning, hey, here it says, if belt push button two is sending a signal, motor will turn on. That works. Here it says in automatic mode, if the push button one is pressed and there is a piece in the beginning, the motor is on. So which is it? Is this when the motor will turn on? Or is this when the motor will turn on? The PLC can't decide for you. It just does what you say. So it chooses one of these, right? It chooses one of these. They are kind of like counteracting. <clears throat> to avoid this, to avoid using your very, just don't use your output variable twice. Don't assign anything twice. Um, that's how you should have it. But to find out where stuff like this happens, because it could be that you have a program with 200 line to 200 networks, 5,000 networks, and you could have an output assigned or used twice, three times, four times, five times. That could easily happen. How can you find out that you use your output more than once? You can either um, right click on it and there comes something out called cross references or cross reference information. If you click on cross references, a little window will open. This little window here is your so-called cross reference window. It's your cross reference window. And you see that belt motor forward. This is what I see here on top. Belt motor forward, this is my output, is used in automatic mode function and also in manual mode function. It is used in both. That's not bad per se. Let's go on. In automatic mode, it is used as read and write. Read and write indicates, hey, that it is changed. It is, it is used reading the status of it. That's fine. No, nothing is going to override there. But it is also written. Let's see in the manual mode. In manual mode, it is used as write. So if it's written changed in manual mode and it is changed in automatic mode it is changed twice in your program in one cyclic execution it is used twice it is changed twice that's pretty bad so that's that means it's being overwritten right <clears throat> um yeah so that's pretty bad let's go back here this is when you right click on it and go cross references you can see where it's used where it's overwritten so if you if you think, hey, it should be on, but it's not, go to the cross references and check out, hey, do I write it twice? If you write it twice, that's usually the problem. Second thing that you can do is right click and go cross reference information. This will open the, a similar window down here, right? In your inspector window, it will open also the so called cross references. You can see that here cross references. Info cross-references. If you want, you can always just uh, select a variable, go to info, right? click on info and click on cross-references. That will also bring you here or you go right click and uh, cross-references, uh, cross-reference information or you go shift F11. Also fine. So what can we see here? This is very, very similar and you see, hey, automatic mode, this is where it's used, manual mode, this is where it's used. It's used in network one here, network two there. It's used and you see it's written in both. So it's, it's very similar. But I like this more because it's down in the inspector and you can still see the program. What is very, very nice about those cross references is that you can now just click on the blue hyperlinks here. So I can click on here automatic mode. Hey, it's used here. I can also click on manual mode. Hey, it's used there. So you see it automatically brings you to the position where you use the variable. Good. So now that we have this information, right? now that we have this information, of course, you would need to fix this somehow. <laughs> and that's, of course, advanced programming. I will show you how we can fix this problem here um, in a second. The last thing I want to show you with cross references where you can find also a nice window is here on top. You see on the top, there is something called cross references. It's two uh, little squares with an X through them. X is cross, right? If you click on this, um, you will also open those cross references. If you now select your PLC, for example, and click on the cross references, you will open all variables, everything that's used everywhere. 
right? So you can also look at more than one thing at the same time. That's pretty nice. I can see what's used where, is it reading, is it writing? You can see, of course, with bigger programs, this becomes very, very complicated. That's why I usually use it just for one variable, clicking on it, going to info down here and cross references. <clears throat> Good. How can we fix this particular problem? If you have overwritten something, right? If something is not the right value that you want to have, um, it is good to not write the same thing twice. So what we could do is, uh, let's put something in our main function here in the end. I do not want to have a multiple assignment for the same variable. So this is very, the cross reference is pretty much done. Now I'm just fixing the problem. Um, I would now use the, uh, the following trick. This output, this motor forward, did I call it belt forward? This belt forward, you only want to use it once, right? You only want to use this once. So what can you do? You can in manual mode, you do not want to access the motor directly. And this is exactly why we have so-called memory bits. You can also use data uh, DB, so data block bit. Um, but usually you would use some memory bits. So I take M30.0. I would tell, say, hey, this is motor forward in manual, right? So this is only written once, right? It's only written once. So it's never overwritten. I can go back to my main and say, hey, if this is on, my motor will go forward. So I will try to find it. You see my program is already a little bit complex. So now this works for manual mode. And what do I want? If this is on in manual or if it's on an automatic. So I will have a parallel branch here and I will also have an automatic bit. So in automatic mode, I will replace this with an automatic bit. I'm 30.1, let's say. Uh, motor forward in auto mode so and this of course i will now put here forward in automatic mode so let's download and then we will have a look at the fix that we had here let's first check if it works i have not tested it so now the program is in here i reset my room for now let's put a box on the belt so let's first check manual mode. Yeah, works perfectly fine. And the box doesn't roll. Let's put it in the start sensor. And now if I hit automatic mode, you see the box goes and now it's fully automatic to the end because it is not overwritten. Right? So let's have a look how that looks like in my TR portal manual mode. Same as before. Right? This is pretty much the same as we had before. So if I hit the belt in forward, and if I hit the belt in forward, you see it turns green. Acting on this intermediate memory, right? This memory will turn on the, this one here, right? This one here, and this will turn on the motor. So it's just an intermediate. And this one is not used anywhere else. It's not overwritten. Now, the second thing is in automatic mode, right? In automatic mode, Call environment changed. I need to close and reopen. Hmm, strange. So in automatic mode, right? So let's put that box back in the beginning. Bloop. Back in the beginning. There we go. And now if I hit the start button, <laughs> I love that it rolls. You see that the uh, that it was set. So this variable here was set. The memory was set, and it's only reset if it hits the end. This is not used anywhere else. If I want to check if this is used somewhere else, I just go down here, I check my cross references, and I can see this one is being used as read only here, uh, read only here, right, in my main, where I'm using it to put it uh, to the output. And it is write, uh, read and write used here for my set reset. So this is not overwritten somewhere else. Right. <clears throat> so let's see it one last time. Let's burp. let's go on, and it doesn't roll finally. So this is the principle here, and this is how you use cross references, basic level. There's some more things which I won't explain on this, but this is basic level 
uh, here 15 minutes. That's perfectly fine. Um, there we go. This is basic. This is really like really basic troubleshooting strategies here. It's one of the most important tools that I use almost every time I or I use every time I fix a PLC program. Good. So. 15 minutes on cross references. If you've got any questions, put them in my forum. I have opened a forum. I will put a uh, link in the description below. A little nice forum where you can ask questions and share your knowledge with others called the world of automation here. Look at this ain't that nice. So really a little forum where you can share. <clears throat> um, and some people have already started using it. That's great. The second thing, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. And if you got some spare change on you, I have made a GoFundMe. People that watch my videos, you already know about it. So if you have some spare change, throw it uh, to me. Link is in the description below. If not, perfectly fine. But do not forget to like and do not forget to subscribe and share my channel with everyone out there so we can grow as a community. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day and stay healthy. Bye-bye. <laughs>